YouTube channel in front of you, it's Chanel Aries and thank you so much for clicking on this video and to all my old subscribers, thank you so much for sticking in and to all the new and new members of this channel, thank you so much, don't forget to subscribe and I hope you like it, yeah, so subscribe, like, share and comment. So today I, I thought, let me just do a video that I never thought I would do, so... I thought, why not? Let me just do it so that I can help someone out there who is not aware of certain things in terms of metric, the life after metric, um, some few mistakes here and there because I've learned from experience, not that I know much or whatever, but then I learned from my experience. Um, um, I can't say that I have regrets, but then I learned from whatever happened in terms of my metric life. So I thought, let me just share my experience and what people can do to make sure that they don't go through what I, I, I went through. So don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment. Follow me on, on Instagram at channel Aries. So today I will be talking about metric and everything metric related. The first thing that you have to make sure that you pass your metric guys. You make sure that if you are someone who's watching and you're still at grade 11, make sure that your grade 11 marks are top notch, guys, because my results for grade 12 were not the best of the best. So if you're someone who's doing metric or grade 11, make sure that you nail everything. Grade 11 tends to be hard because they introduce new chapters and everything, but everything is impossible. You just have to make a plan. You just have to make sure that you make a study plan you you make goals you set goals you know so what i can say is that passing your metric is vital and passing your metric the right way it's vital for instance i passed with a bachelor endorsement <laughs> i know you think oh that's good and everything but then the thing is my result didn't allow me to enroll at a university or something of that sort. It was painful for me and it's something I know that most people out there, they will go through, they might go through, they've went through, but then personally for me, it was something that was painful. And um, I was so shocked. I was like, like, what really happened? Like, what happened? What happened is that and I didn't pre prepare enough. Um, I didn't have, like, I didn't set realistic goals for myself. Um, that person who, who does well under pressure, that's the impression that I have. So the thing is, I used to procrastinate. I used to not make effort for my studies. I only made effort for my studies when I was, um, Some, somewhere around trial examination, that's where I started showing some effort. Can you imagine not taking into account, not remembering that my grade 11 result were not it, they sucked. What I can tell you is that my re grade 11, my grade 11 result were the worst. So, and they told me, they told me that girl, you have to make sure that your grade 11 marks are on the good side and also you can also boost them with what with your great tough result but then i didn't listen i listened but then it's in a camo yeah joke because it is too much with all the unnecessary things and i'm that someone who knew that i had a second option the thing with me is that i already knew that i wanted to study business management or anything related to entrepreneurship i'm that someone who's I'm like, I aspire to be an entrepreneur in life and I've already started that I might not be a major entrepreneur, but then like already ha I have small businesses that I've, I've ventured into. So the thing with me is that I knew, I knew that I had an option. The option was where I knew that I have, I had an option at the college where you can find national diploma in business management. That's why I... I moved slowly, but now 
you can imagine if you are someone who wants to study things like medicine you want to study um uh, nothing related to electrical engineering yeah yeah college or not those modules related to business uh business studies Sako college you want to study uh, a course that that can only be found at, at the university that's where the problem starts imagine you have a b but then you can't enroll at university that's the problem i had and the most painful part is when i saw all my peers wearing those student cards and on hanging on their necks and everything it was very painful for them i wished to be them and i asked myself what did i do wrong the only thing that i did wrong is that i never put in the i never did put in enough effort i got effort for what i received but then it was not enough I was happy with, like I can say that I was happy, I was satisfied with my result because I set myself for that, which is me enrolling at a college, which is what I did, even though I did it on a, at a later stage, but then I eventually did it. But then imagine if you're someone who wants courses that can be only be found at universities, you don't know what to do, you think uh, you want to upgrade, you upgrade results come come the same way as they were or a slight change only maybe a percentage change one thing about me i knew that i didn't want to upgrade because i had an option at the college so what i'm trying to emphasize right now is for people who want to do courses that can't be found at a college what what can you do? Put in the effort, girl. There's a lot that you can do. And metric is just a one-year period. And I know studying it tends to be very hard. But then you have to do what you have to do. So things started get, uh, getting real when uh, we, um, it was time for a trial examination and so forth. Um, my grade 12, um, June marks, I passed, but then... <laughs> my daughter's score but then i knew that i had to improve so what i did is that i had to do some self-introspection the self-introspection was me making sure that i have a study plan i have a method that i'll use uh, for studying to make sure that i retain the information with that being said i made sure that i come up with method that methods that will help me improve improve myself as an individual improve my marks as a learner because before i was a learner i was not a student so what i did i asked my mom to install dstv at home at home we didn't have dstv because my parents my mom specifically couldn't afford it my mom was not married at the time so my mom couldn't afford dstv for us but then fortunately enough when i was doing grade 12 things like were much better so i asked my mom mom can you please install dstv for us here at home because there's this channel that i need to watch so that i can improve my metric result i showed her all the, my, my, my results throughout grade 11 to grade 12 and I showed her, I made her aware that if I, c I continue like this, chances of me passing my trick are slight. I just wanted to um, convince her. Everyone knows their parents so I knew what, which way to go. And you know, most of the time when you tell parents about education and everything, they'll do anything in their hands, in their plans to make sure that you have whatever you are requesting. So mom, my mom did that and I started watching this channel on DSTV. I forgot the name of the channel, I'll write it down here. Um, I started watching that channel and me in, in being impatient around the TV, it didn't work out for me. I'm not a fan of TV. I am not a fan. So what? luckily I stayed closer to a school next door there's a school from Limbobo where I, I used to stay so what I did I asked a few of my friends around my cycle those who were doing grade 12 I asked them guys can we just create study groups whereby we will help each other and fortunately enough 
the school where we wanted to study at, there were already learners who were studying there. I was just not aware of that. So we started going there. I lack mostly in calculations and everything. What I did is that I used to help them with theory because I'm good with that. So they helped me with calculations most of the times. Or if there was something that we didn't understand, we would help each other to tackle that a problem or to solve it so that that's what we did and it really worked out so well for us because I remember in my trial examination I was the most relaxed girl ever since I started writing exams as a learner I was so relaxed even with my final I was so relaxed and the only anxiety that I got was the hall that we used to write in and that thing it's my first grade 12 final examination paper but then all in all i was so relaxed very relaxed so that worked out very well for us and i personally had to create a study plan for us because we couldn't all they we couldn't always cover what we we each of us lacked with like we just had to come up with something the a lore we can see it's a it's a major problem so i personally had to create a plan whereby i would make sure that i study everything and i retain it so me knowing that i'm a commercial student i used to do business studies and economics so those things they require essays and everything and i know that even with history and life sentence such so i'm just going to talk about my stream because that's what i've did i've done so hopefully you guys can just you know so what i did is that i checked previous question papers i checked questions that they used to ask more often and i could see oh this is the nature of this question this is how the question paper tends to be like so with essay question questions i made sure that i i write subtitles if you understand the subtitle it's easy for you to explain the whole information so that's what i did and if you, <laughs> if you are someone who used to visit me when I was doing grade 12 and you had the chance to go in my room, when you got into my room, you'll find small papers like around the wall or around the door whereby you'll see my notes. I made sure that um, each space whereby I use, like I pass most of the time, like, it, like m fridge, the kitchen. On the fridge, you'd see like, Minomics, like, I hope that's how they pronounce them. Minomics, like, umwaladi, you write letters whereby they remind you of something. Uh, let's say marketing mix, price, promotion, uh, whatever. I, I forgot them, but then that's what I did. And, uh, like, I was surprised when, how, like, it's funny. <laughs> No, guys, I don't know how to, how to say this. I was so shocked at how much I in, I managed to remember the information. Small things, small things. And another thing that I used to do is to cross night. If you are someone like me who doesn't know how to study throughout the day, who doesn't know how to study with uh, background sounds around them, what I did, I used to cross night. It wasn't easy. It was very hard. It was like I was torturing myself and everything, but then I knew the hardest things in life, they do, they, it didn't drop a code. The hardest things in life, they don't come easy. I, I remembered. So that's what I did. And another thing is that if I wanted, if there's something that I could, I could See or not, this one, <laughs> it seems like I would record myself. Usually I would do that with, with essay questions also. I would record myself or with explanation, defining the word. So I would record myself, like I would gently talk, record myself. When I'm bored or not doing anything, I'll just sit down and listen to uh, myself defining those words. And it worked out very well for me. And I'll do a quiz between me and a friend and ask them. Now, I, I, I can also say that I'm, uh, I was fortunate enough to have 
a competitive friend. I had a friend at school who was Ruta Tutsi. Nage, if you're watching this, you, <laughs> one way or the other, you pushed me. You didn't realize that, but then you pushed me. Um, my friend, uh, uh, he, he one of those people who, and for some people, they took it the wrong way or what. But then for me, I used it, I used it to my advantage. I made sure, I made sure, Gore silently. So I didn't want to tell him because I knew he was going to do overdo himself. So I, I wanted him at his neutral uh, form. Yeah. So I made sure that I compete with him silently so it worked out very well for me and if you are, you just have to be that competitive person in life to make sure that you get things um that so another issue is applying at universities applying at universities it can be a headache at times because oh my god applying at universities it's it's not that really that hard, but then it tends to be hard for someone who is not informed about certain things, who doesn't know um, where should I start. It's, it's I've heard a lot of people saying that, no, nah, it isn't everything. But then to some people, let me tell you something, in South Africa, that's something that I usually say. It's a privilege to have data in South Africa. And as you can see how expensive data tends to be and how it's it's expensive in South Africa, some people cannot afford um, to buy data and everything. But if you have data and everything, it becomes a bit easier. For some people, it's not like they didn't want to apply. They didn't have the resources. Can we just be, can we just ease on that? Can we? So, applying at university, you have to make sure that you have the required APS for that um, for that course that you want. APS, most of the times, it excludes life orientation. So, you just have to make sure that it, um, your APS um, is equivalent or more to what they require. And at college, it's a different thing. At college, if you want to study business studies, I don't know about engineering, but then if you want to study business studies for business management, they will require uh, accounting 40% and above. And for financial accounting, they'll also require that also. And I think it's possible to enroll if even if you don't have commerce, business studies and everything as long as you have accounting because it's just a theory and everything so this goes to all the people who don't know um things like APS and so forth you have to make sure that you meet the minimum requirements the minimum requirements differ according to courses according to faculties so um for people who who can't really meet the requirements like with double verbs, um, UJ, try applying at uh, universities like University of Limpopo, um, DUT, um, Val University, Tuane University, those type of universities because sometimes their requirements are all are on the lesser side. So you can make sure to research even further. So for you to be able to be part of a university after enrolling in everything, you have to have a bursary, a bursary that will fund you, that will pay for your tuition fees. If there's one thing that I can pronounce, well, it has to be tuition. <laughs> I, guys, bear with me. But then you have to make sure that you have a bursary. Bursaries differ from college to college university to university and so forth but the, the most famous one which is um nsfas nsfas it's it's the girl Utata. like <laughs> you have to apply for uh, nsfas and nsfas you have to meet their minimum requirements there are there's a criteria of which they go by 
so you have to make sure that you meet the requirements that are set um one thing that i know is that for people who have for people who have parents that have income that is greater than I think it's 350,000 or 360, they do not qualify. Then there's another bazaar that is called Funza Lushaka. Um, I'm not more informed about the Funza Lushaka bazaar, but then most of the times it, it funds teachers, if I'm not mistaken. But can you kindly please research more about that if like, you want to know even further about that? But let me take, let me talk even further about NSFAS. One thing about NSFAS is, is, is that it has a lot of issues. There are problems here and there and everything. You can be fortunate enough to be one of those people who, does, who, who, who don't struggle with NSFAS. So with NSFAS in terms of college student, if you are someone who's considered in studying at college, you have to know that NSFAS most of the times it doesn't fund no 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 most of the time NSFAS they uh, allocate the allowance perhaps after five months six months this year I've waited for almost it's September yeah for almost nine months I haven't received my NSFAS allowance maybe it's because I had to appeal and everything but then for this year i had an issue with nsfas but overall i've never had a bad experience with nsfas besides um this year and you have to take note if you're someone who's going to be studying at college at college there's no accommodation like um those type of accommodation like double vets UJ and everything whereby you can apply so that they can allocate you at a type, particular residence and everything. Some they do have, but the majority of them, they do not have um, accommodation. With accommodation, you'll be required to rent a room somewhere and know that. And as far as most of the time, it's allocated after um, five months, three months, but then it's a challenge. It's a challenge for most college students. Let me, let me make you aware of that. And you'll be required to, when you get that room, you'll be required to pay your rent for yourself. If there's transport required, you'll have to do that by yourself. Then you'll have to have um, furniture at your room. They send that it's a struggle, but then eventually things will make sense. And one thing that <laughs> it's bad, like I'm not trying to discourage anyone. I'm just trying to be real with you like i've tried to, uh, i'm trying to put myself in someone's shoes i was fortunate enough that my parents pay rent for me and i've never struggled with things like i don't have transport money and everything like i appreciate all these things but then i have friends i have like i have seen friends and people who dropped out because of such challenges and they had to drop out because they didn't they couldn't afford to pay rent transportation the fees, sometimes they just get declined out of nowhere. But then it's not possible for NSFAS to just decline you out of nowhere. They have, there might be an issue somewhere and you just have to um, inquire and see what, what the problem might be. So that's what you have to do. But then for me, I was fortunate enough I couldn't go through all of that. You have to appreciate the little things in life, guys. Some students had to drop out because of such things. I don't know about university. I never had a university experience. I'm talking from a college experience. So to all the metric students out there, make sure that you study. You study harder. Make sure that you get your metric. Lately, things are very hard without metric. You have to make sure that you get your metric, be it higher certificate, diploma, or anything. But as a person in life, learn to aim high. Learn to aim high. So I hope you liked this video and don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. And if there's something that I didn't mention, forgive me. I just wanted to vent, but then also advise on the other hand and subscribe like share and comment see you on the next video